Men are being fed this line, go chase your dime, go chase your dollar, get a career, do all the things that you need to do. And that makes you higher status, higher value. Meanwhile, they have no relationship skills. They have no ability to tell stories. They have no ability to show up. I think a man could be infatuated with a woman's physical appearance. And that's been throughout history. Helen of Troy, the face that launched a thousand ships. Cleopatra, right? Gorgeous women have brought empires to their knees. A high value woman might be how loving she is. Welcome back to the I Wish You Knew podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Lane Smith, and with me is my good friend, Sarah Don Moore. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what makes a high value man. This is something Sarah and I have argued about off camera many times, so it's time that we have this debate and settle it once and for all. If you're up for this, we are too, and uh, if we have to cut to technical difficulties for a minute, we'll do that too. Sarah, good to see you again. How are you good doing? Good to see you, Adam. So apparently, we're gonna talk about high value and what mm -hmm. that means and what that doesn't mean. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't necessarily particularly like the term. I've shared that with my audience before. I've shared that with friends, family. I think that it is misplaced. Um, I don't necessarily think that anyone should determine anyone else's value. Uh, if you believe in a God, such as I do, the only value that I, that I want to be judged on or, or what I think is by my God. And so if somebody actually, I actually had a man once, um, <laughs> tell me that I was high value and I found it to be very, um, abrasive. Did I didn't, you, did you throw up on him? I did. I threw up on him a little bit. Yeah. He never, he never saw me again. That okay. was the end of that okay. dating experience. So high I tell value. my, co I tell my coaching clients, don't ever tell a woman that she's high value yeah. she, because it's, you'll get high value vomit. Really yeah, quick. yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, you will. And, and the reason why <sighs> is because typically that term circulates within certain, uh, corners of the internet. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't hear really people talking about that out on the street. <laughs> if I were to have a conversation with my family and bring this up, they'd probably go, what the hell are you talking about? Sure. So it tells me that if a man says that, it tells me that <laughs> typically they believe in a subset of different ideas and beliefs okay. that make a man high value. Now, is this... Is this something like he is being possessive of you? Like, hey, sweetheart, you have a lot of value. I would trade many sheep for you. Or are we talking a specific ideology that would use the words high value? What are we uh, talking about? Specific here? ideology, okay. yes. So and the sheep thing is okay. You want to be worth many sheep, <laughs> but not, not the ideology. Okay. Yes, a hundred sheep, no okay. less. No less. Okay. Yeah, the ideology that women... Um, are a, a certain value that certain characteristics that they possess will make them higher value, such as, you know, 1950s stay at home in the kitchen and are submissive and are a certain type of way with men. Now, do I believe that I am feminine? Do I believe that I want to, yes, do I support men being in leadership roles? Do I support men in general? 100%. I absolutely believe that men should be leading, but they should be leading sometimes from the front and sometimes from the back. Mm. And a lot of these men who believe in this term believe in a little bit more of a forceful type of leadership and believe that women should know their place within their role in the relationship. And I just don't think that that really is the, that that's not a healthy way to view a woman. A woman is a, is an integrated human being and has a lot of different characteristics that make her who she is. And I don't, I don't, and because the thing is, is if a man says I'm high value or if any man says that, then where else do I have to go down? What, what who, have you assigned me that value? And where did you get those values from? And, okay. and who says that you're right on my value being high or not? And if I make a mistake, does that, if I don't live up to one of your values, does, then does that make me low value? Hmm. What do you think? Okay. So here is something that I talk about a lot because I've got a lot of male coaching clients and they come in and they go on dates and they, uh, 
let's say that they, they take a woman out for a very expensive dinner and they, they dress very carefully. They learn all the relationship skills. They do everything they can. They progress maybe through the dating. They progress into the relationship. They cook her dinners. They, they do all kinds of things for her and they put all this effort into the relationship. And a lot of the time they will complain that the woman will just show up and occasionally offer sex in the first seven months. And then that starts to dwindle. And that's all that those women seem to be bringing to the relationship. So one thing I will ask is, can we look at value maybe as what offer you bring to the relationship? What value you bring to the other person's life? What you offer to them in their existence and in their life? Could we talk about it that way rather than how many goats she could fetch, for example? Because we still have to be aware of the enhancement we bring to somebody else's life. I do think that your value, I think everyone has human dignity, but I don't think that everybody has value innately in themselves. If we put you on a desert island, you would have zero value. You'd have human dignity and your mm -hmm. life is worth a great deal and you as a person are worth a great mm -hmm. deal. But worth and value, I think, are very different. I think that value is represented in what you offer in relationships with other people that enhances their life. What do you think of that? Good, bad? Mm, it still does not sit right with me because that doesn't make sense when it comes to value. What if it's just relationship competencies that you have understood or that you have taken, whether that's classes, you know, whether you have done some self-reflection, whether you have decided, okay, if my relationships aren't working out, maybe there's a... Um, a reflection or, you know, an inward focus of, okay, what are some behaviors that I need to be correcting that are going to make me a better suited, suitable partner for someone else reading books, but does that increase my value as a potential partner? Um, I'm not sure. I think that it, in, it increases just like if you were to, you know, learn a, learn a new subject in a new math or you were in high school or you're in college and you study something that means that you're going to be better well suited to answer a question or answer a test question but does that make you more valuable as an individual i'm not quite sure because there's some people that would be happy with certain women and some women or some men that would be happy with certain women that didn't that just showed up for potential sex every once in a while. Mm -hmm. So I think that it needs to to be more framed as in what type of relationship, com and, and this is what I mean, okay, okay, Adam. What I'm worried about what we're doing with dating right now is I will say on the opposite side, what women are sometimes experiencing is men are being fed this line to be high value. Men are being fed you know, go chase your dime, go chase your dollar, get a career, do all the things that you need to do. And that makes you higher status, higher value. Meanwhile, they have no relationship skills. Mm -hmm. They have no ability to tell stories. They have no ability to show up and understand how women work. They think simply by being a loud mouthed uh, type of man that has a nice car is automatically going to garner them a bunch of attention from women is and is going to give them some sort of a false confidence that they are ready for a relationship that what they bring to the the value of the relationship is protection and provisioning but with women we want more than that. Let me tell you a little bit about our sponsor today, Rugged Legacy, because guys, there is nothing better than a well-kept, well-groomed man. So if you want her to kiss you more without feeling like she's kissing sandpaper, this does the trick. Works 99.9% .9 of the time. But again, men are very, I appreciate that men are very um, direct, they are very simple creatures, you know, they want certain things and women are much more complex. I think that we could probably all agree with that. I don't want to say simple, um, but men, men just have, you know, I say different needs than women, than women do. Well, let me ask you this. So I had a, I had a couple come to me not long ago. I, the, the, the man was my primary client and he very carefully built up a multi-million dollar business. He 
kept himself in amazing physical shape. Um, he cooked. He did most of the cooking in the relationship as well. He did most of the cleaning in the relationship as well. Um, he took care of her needs. He took her out on dates at least three days a week. He made good time with her friends. He gave financial assistance to her family when she needed help. And she very often was not terribly respectful of him. Mm -hmm. She was very rude during arguments. She, I, and I witnessed it myself, she uh, demanded marriage from him. And the contention that brought them to me was, should we get married and have kids? And after a number of years together, we were working on this, basically doing a, a marriage negotiation. And he sat and, and looked at her and said, I bring all the money so that you don't have to work. I bring all of the home and, 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 have, and protect it. I cook and clean. <laughs> I respect you and I'm considerate of you and you don't respect me. We occasionally have sex. What do you bring to the table? And her answer was, was reminiscent of what you're saying. I know it's, it's not what you're saying because I know you personally, you do have, mm -hmm. you do have a lot of wonderful qualities. Um, so I know that's not you, but a lot of the women that I encounter when they say, I shouldn't have to bring something to the table. I have, I am, I should be good enough myself. The men are expected to bring a tremendous amount to the table, mm -hmm. a tremendous amount. How do we counter that? How do we square that with women should not have to be measured with any value externally from how they feel about themselves, but men have to bring everything. How do you square that? By men not rewarding those types of women. Men will probably most likely reward those types of women because they're beautiful. So sometimes men, men, you, why are you doing that? Why would you, why are you staying? with types of women like that, because there's a price that you pay when you date a woman who is very attractive. Mm -hmm. And that is that typically what they bring to the table is very little because they know that they can get attention from whomever. So they haven't had to be challenged in life. Okay. So they haven't had to be, they've been given everything, especially if they still have a father, especially if their father has put them on this pedestal. So, so my question again, the message that guys are, are are getting is do this, do that, make your bag so that you can attract a beautiful woman. And then once they get that beautiful woman who doesn't, who does not bring anything, who doesn't have any type of relationship competencies, mm -hmm. and then they complain about it and wonder why, because I've had clients like that too. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful woman that they're with. Mm -hmm. And then a year, two years, three years down the road, I go, okay, so now you know that if you want to be happy in a relationship, that you need to look for other things other than beauty. Mm -hmm. Because women, you guys are also rewarding that. Mm -hmm. And society rewards that as well. That women, if you are beautiful, if you are this, we call it pretty privilege. Women will rise to the top of the ranks, whether it's Instagram, whether it's OnlyFans, whether it's Playboy, just for being beautiful. Mm -hmm. So think about if men stopped rewarding that, and men challenged women and said, no, if you can't cook, if you cannot make me a meal, if you cannot do these things, then I'm not going to reward you with the relationship. Don't you think that that behavior would change with women? So what I think you're doing there, because you've, you've brought, you've said things like they need to bring things to the table. Don't reward those things, bring reward women who have other things and bring other things. What it sounds like you're arguing for is that men, it's not that women shouldn't be told you have value or you don't have value. It sounds like to me, it sounds like you're, you're saying that women do need to have value, but we're valuing the wrong things. We're mm -hmm. valuing shallow things. We're not valuing other things. So a high value woman isn't how big her boobs are. A high value woman might be how loving she is. Her relation, like you said, it was great. A relationship competencies, her relationship competencies, men all over the internet, uh, well, not all over the internet, but a lot of guys who, who are at least more competent in relationships, they, when you ask them, like, what is a high value woman? One of the first things I, th they should say, and many of them do is loyal. She should be loyal. Now the same, many of the same guys, to your point, they say there's no such thing as a loyal woman, but it's the first thing out of their mouth. When you say what's a high value woman, well, loyal, but there are none. So, okay. There's no high value women, right? I think, and I think our common ground here is that, yes, you can say a person has value. We shouldn't say a person has no value, 
but we sh- maybe we should specify where they have value, right? I've, I've been married almost 15 years with my wife. Mm-hmm. I could describe her as a very high value woman. She's very intelligent. She's not abrasive. She's kind. She is loyal. She, she is a wonderful mother for our children. We've got baby number five on the way. She's probably in the kitchen right now, taking care of the kids, teaching them and pregnant at the same time. So it's the, it's the dream, right? Um, but she also challenges me to rise to better than I am. She also calls me out on, on my bull crap. If I have any that day, she, she does, she has so many great skills and yes, I could very comfortably describe her as a high value woman. And maybe I'll go home and tell her that today. I don't really later. <laughs> um, maybe she'll throw up on me. I don't know. We'll find out. But what do you think of that? Could we shift the discussion to, instead of saying she is a high value woman, from us viewing like she's an Instagram model mm-hmm. to she has great relationship competencies. She, she is loyal. She is loving. She is thoughtful. Does that sit better or no? So when it comes to high value, right. And low value and all these terms, the thing that really, that that's quite bothersome to me is that this could be regional this could change with different countries. Mm-hmm. This could change with your demographics. This could change mm-hmm. with, you know, where you are in the world, at what age you are, sure. depending on, you know, I mean, again, there's just a lot of misconceptions, but look, the reason why, let's say you become a better communicator Mm -hmm. let's say you're in a relationship or you decide to take a class or you decide to take a course is to increase your ability to potentially solve conflict to learn a skill that will make you a a potentially a better partner Mm. so does that say and what that does is that it makes the relationship potentially more cohesive. It makes you closer. It brings you together. It makes you love the person potentially more. Mm -hmm. So, but do you consider that high value? No, you, I would consider that just someone that wants to potentially that's invested in themselves. It's invested in the relationship. So I look to them as, okay, well, they have a competency of, of growth. And what do I value? I value someone who also wants to be growth mindsetted, who also wants to, you know, take advantage of all the things that are out there right now that are necessary to be an amazing, healthy relationship so that Mm -hmm. we can be in the best place and we can have an amazing time versus someone that, I don't know, that doesn't necessarily value those same things as far as. But what you said in there, I value. Mm -hmm. That means some people are going to have high value to you and some people are going to have low value to you. Or some people are just going to have different sets of competencies. I keep going back to this. Mm -hmm. I keep going back to this because... I think it's a good point. I I, I think that the competencies are a huge portion of a person's value. Right. But but we typically date, right, within our same subset, whether it's from an economic level, whether it's from a social level, whether it's from, you know, you typically don't necessarily have princes dating peasants for, for a certain reason, because of the competencies that they bring, you know, that if you brought someone, let's say a, um, uh, uh, let's say somebody who was of, of poverty level, Mm -hmm. right. They're, they're not going to know how to potentially interact in your circles. Mm -hmm. They're not going to know how to potentially talk about certain things that you talk about within a certain circle. You know, I I don't know what Prince William talks about, but I don't know. I don't know if I'd be able to even keep up right with, with the, with the certain things that the monarch might talk about, but does that make me low value? The fact that I wouldn't be a match for Prince William to Prince William, it might make you low value. Okay, but but do you see that that do you see the ju- the inherent judgment in that? Mm-hmm. I do. Is judgment wrong? Again, I would say yes, that it is. It just means that I don't have the competencies that he potentially is looking for in a woman that he would bring to his family because I don't come from generational wealth. But does that make me lower value? Who says? Let's flip that around. So if you're the princess of a great nation, are you going to go out and marry a prince? Or are you going to marry the dude who collects dog feces from the roads? Which guy are you going to have is going to have higher value to you as the princess? I will probably be 
more aligned with my life vision, with my goals, with who I am as a human being, with all of the attributes that that um, as far as our education, as far as the things that we even talk about, common interests, mm -hmm. I will probably be more well aligned or equally yoked, as we say in, in the Christian community. Um, I will be more equally yoked with someone that has competencies that are more aligned to the prince. I am not sure that me and the guy who's pooper scooping, who knows? Maybe, maybe I, maybe he's well read. Maybe he's educated. All I'm saying is that I'll give you an example. I had a client. He was um, in construction. Mm -hmm. He owned a very successful business. Mm -hmm. You know, never, mm -hmm. never went to college. Mm -hmm. Didn't need to. Make it, made his bag. Okay. Did all the things he needed to do. Now he would tell me that sometimes that would come up with women that sure. they would oh, yeah. not necessarily appreciate that, that sure. they wanted a man who was college educated or they wanted a man who, you know, had different attributes mm -hmm. than what he brought, than what he brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be very shocking and surprising mm -hmm. that women would consider him of lower value because he didn't have a college education. Yeah. So is that really fair? Is it, is it that what we want to really be teaching people that this man is of lower value to you because he doesn't have his college degree. I think that we need to draw a distinction between giving people value and then shooting them for having low value between assigning people a value for us in romantic relationships. Because I think that if, if we, if we say, for example, every single woman's value is exactly equal. Mm -hmm. And men should never expect anything from women ever again. No value. You can never say that one woman is any better for you than any other woman. Then I think we get the dating scene that we have right now, <laughs> which, which is every woman feels like she could just walk out there and say, well, I am a woman. Here I am. I have boobs. I can have sex with people occasionally. I have high value. And guys are expected to do everything to, to, to play like a trained seal for her amusement. If we get there, I think we need to use judgment and discernment and say, you are not high value in my life for this purpose versus we should execute you because you have. But why value. does it have to even be value? Why can't it just be we don't see eye to eye on the same things? We don't have relational goals that are in alignment with one another. Mm -hmm. And I am looking for certain attributes in someone else. Why does there have to be a value assigned because another man might be just as happy with finding someone that is a, as a woman who does just bring sex to the table. Absolutely. Because he does bring the whole bag and that's okay. Absolutely. And he's, he is a, a more of a rounder gentleman. He doesn't necessarily work out. He just brings money and that's sure. all that she wants. And sure. that is 100% fine. Their value, they, they are alignment with each other, mm -hmm. but to, to, to assign value to someone, I, I just don't, I don't see how that works out. I don't, I don't think that that's healthy. I think you need to go into it looking at relationship competencies. And if you value a beautiful woman, then know that you're going to have to compromise on other relationship competencies. But if you, if I'm, if, if I'm coaching guys, right. And I'm saying, cause a lot of guys won't even go into the dating with expectation. Mm -hmm. They will just go into the dating with, oh my gosh, this beautiful woman showed up and she's beautiful. Okay, well, what, what, what else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, how is she with her communication skills? Mm -hmm. um, does she fight you a lot? Does mm -hmm. she challenge you? Does she, you know, is she able to speak about other topics intelligently? Uh, how does she do with your friends? Mm -hmm. Is she, you know, is she nice to people? <laughs> like, is she just a good human being overall? Mm -hmm. And, and if she isn't, that doesn't make her low value. That just means that she is not in alignment with you and the relationship competencies, competencies that you are looking for in a human being and an individual. I remember in the 90s, um, they tried this thing where they taught men, instead of valuing right the housewife, instead of valuing uh, just plain beauty, instead of valuing X, Y, and Z, um, value a woman for her brain. Right. Value a woman for her character. Right. We, we look at the Disney movies that, that shifted away from she's beautiful and she's just laying there and I should kiss her because she's gorgeous. And we shifted toward like Mulan. Right. 
Like, and, and they talk. They have the whole a woman worth fighting for. They have a song in there about that. I don't even know if I can say that on here with copyright infringement. But they, they have a whole song about a woman worth fighting for and what men value. And she comes in and she starts talking about how about a woman who's got a brain and always speaks her mind. And all the guys go, bleh, bleh, and they laugh. And, and when I watch this scene with, with my kids, I kind of explain, like, do you understand men and women value different things, even about themselves? These There are certain things men will value, but they also shouldn't only value those physical things. They should have a mixture where they appreciate you as a person. And maybe that's our common ground is, right? You look at the red pill. They, you, a high value woman in red pill is basically a mindless sex doll who happens to be 10 out of 10. And that's it. A, a sex doll that you can come home to. Oh, she's 23. There she's a sex doll. She doesn't challenge you at all. That's she right. stays in the kitchen. She wants to have children. And that is pretty much her value. There you go. That's what makes her high value. And I think that that, that is not a what, what, what most men, if they want to be happy, should value. I don't think that that's the case at all. My wife, I mean, my wife is stunning and gorgeous, but she also has all these character virtues. And that's what I fell in love with. I think a man can be infatuated with a woman's physical appearance. I think that they can be enchanted, right? Right. And that's been throughout history. Helen of Troy, the face that launched a thousand ships, mm -hmm. they say. Uh, Cleopatra, right? Gorgeous women have brought empires to their knees. And I don't think, I agree with you. I agree with you very much. I, I don't think that we should value that aspect. But I don't think we should throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, don't value anything because that's but you the said I'm some getting. you said a word that uh, that I am thankful that you said that I've been trying to think of this whole time is characteristics. Oh, yeah. What characteristics do you value? Here we go. That make someone a good match for you. You almost said valuable, didn't you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and I feel you. I think we're dancing around the same ideas. I think this is the power of language is rather than saying someone is worthless, because that's the opposite of, of valuable is worthless. Right. Nobody is worthless. Can we agree and on that? Nobody has the right to say you're worthless or not. Nobody, nobody has the right to even, to even throw that word out mm. because then you're just, then the, basically what you're telling me is that if you were to pass away and a homeless person were to pass away, that you are higher value than a homeless person. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but that is not the God that I believe in. If we take the value of the life, yes. If we say the value that you bring to a role, that's where I think the piece is. If I hire a chef and they have never cooked a day in their life mm -hmm. and all they do is sit around and pick their nose and then microwave a hot pocket and send it to me. Do they have the same value as a chef, as someone who went to school and has diligent work ethic and is going to feed me healthy, nutritious food? They have a very different value as a chef. And no, as an but there are qualifications that you have set out specifically, mm -hmm. like deep qualifications. And I think everybody brings deep qualifications to their relationships. Mm -hmm. It just depends. If you're hiring for a Domino's chef, you don't need the certain types of qualifications. There we go. So again, it depends on what what circle you're in because if there's a guy who potentially is you know high school educated all he wants is a woman just to laugh to play video games with to enjoy his life with then who's to tell him that he's low value part of being a good partner is taking care of yourself so that the other person doesn't have to and rugged legacy grooming supply will help you take care of yourself and look your best in your relationships do you see what I'm saying? I don't know, Adam. I don't know if we're ever going to agree on this. I don't know if we will either. So <laughs> what we could do is specify during this conversation, uh, when we talk about, in one phrasing, what makes a high value man, we can also talk about for what, to whom, mm -hmm. to himself in his own life, right? I look at the, the MIGTO movement, men going their own way. And many of them choose to live a life more like a monk. Many of them, not all of them, but they bring value to their own life. They enrich their life. Sometimes they bring value to the men around them, to their community. Um, they can bring value to and provide value to others outside of a romantic relationship. Their value would be very much different from uh, a father, a married father now of, of almost five kids, four and a half, as I say, one is baking in the oven. Uh, I bring a very different kind of value to a very different circumstance. So maybe we can talk about that and differentiate that. I would love to hear what you think would bring a high 
characteristics, compatible characteristics and relationship comp competencies into a relationship for, for you. So let me give you an example. A woman might value a man who is healthy, but you know, let me tell you deep down what her little animal brain is thinking mm -hmm. when she sees like, like my personal trainer, right? Mm -hmm. Or a man who takes good care of himself, who potentially doesn't drink, who doesn't smoke. Mm -hmm. She thinks that man I can fall in love with. Mm -hmm. He's going to be here for a long time. Mm -hmm. I feel safe loving him mm -hmm. because he's going to, I, I'm not, it's not, it's less risky for me to love a man like that because he's going to be here for a long time versus a man who smokes, a man who drinks, a man who, mm -hmm. you know, potentially has a, a shelf life of 40 years old. Mm -hmm. A woman sees that as that's a risk. I'm going to get my heart broken. I'm going to have children with that guy. And then he's potentially going to jump off a cliff and leave me destitute for the children, mm -hmm. or he's going to drink himself to death. I don't want to invest in that because what do women value the most safety? Mm -hmm. We want safety. And so there's certain signals that I think that men need to think about and why they're valuing themselves. Because if you value exercise, if you value putting good food into your body, what that tells me is that you value your health. And if I value my health, then look at that. We have characteristics that we both value, mm -hmm. which are going to make a relationship thrive because then I'm not always going to have to be fighting you to put down the potato chips to take better care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at a lot deeper as what are the reasons why people value these things, especially what are the reasons why women are valuing these things? Because it's very deeply ingrained in our DNA. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarah. So we have beat this bush to absolute death, I feel like, and I don't know that you and I will ever agree on the terms, but here's something we could do. What are the characteristics of a man that would make a woman feel fully safe? in a relationship, not just physically safe, not just financially safe, but, but fully safe as a man. What does that mean? What are his characteristics that you look for? And I'll, I'll list some that I have found and through my work are very helpful for relationships as well. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and forth. Uh, so one thing that I, I teach a lot of men is if you are able to have boundaries, set boundaries. Mm -hmm. But what that, what I mean by that is that sometimes men will do things inadvertently that show a woman that you are looking for their validation and then they're and seeking their approval. And what that shows to a woman is that not only are you seeking her approval, but you're seeking approval from anyone. Mm -hmm. So potentially if you're not getting it from me, then what other woman are you going to seek it from? Mm -hmm. So that's why you'll get the, the D pics or the bathroom <laughs> selfies. I always say, um, sorry to say this guys, but you know, a very masculine man is not going to send me the selfie mm -hmm. because guess what? He doesn't need me to tell him how beautiful he is. Mm -hmm. He already knows within himself. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about men. If you're showing that you are high worth, high self-esteem that you don't ask, you don't need her approval. Mm -hmm. You don't need to send me that picture. You don't need to send any woman a, a half naked picture mm -hmm. and vice versa with women as well. I mean, you guys, men will judge women for their half naked Instagram, but women are doing the same thing when they look at your page and they see that you have gym pics and you are flexing in the mirror. It's mm -hmm. like, why are you doing that? What, what is, what, why do you need to do that? So mm -hmm. I think, some characteristics are self-confidence, knowing that you do not need her approval. It's actually going to send the message to her that you don't care. Mm -hmm. You don't care what she thinks, that you think you're hot and that you don't need me. Because what you're, what you're doing when you send a picture like that, what is the point of sending a half-naked picture to a woman? Ooh, do you want to know what it is? Sure. Do you want to know what it is? It's Go so for it. It's so stupid. I, I sure it is. So... <laughs> Think of if you were a woman sending a picture of your naked boobs to a guy. His he instantly, he's like, oh, he ramps up. It's a present. He's joyous and it makes him aroused. And he wants, he's like, hey, she wants to have sex. I should go have sex with her. And a lot of men honestly believe that if they send you a dick pic, you will respond the same way 
that all the women in the porno and the pornos that they watch will respond. Mm -hmm. You show it, you wave your penis at her and she's so happy. She just leaps on it like a wild animal. That's what they really think is going to happen. And when they don't get that response the first time, they say, oh, I guess she needs more. And you get the sudden onslaught of dick pics. That yeah. is the dumbest thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So the it's not just the D pics too. It's, it's any type of a, again, just like a half naked. So, so guys, I just, it, I really, really advise you before you send that text, that second text, that third text, that, you know, are you still interested kind of text and look, you have to question your motivation mm -hmm. for doing that. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for validation or are you looking to make a connection? And there's no connection that typically is made by sending something that is showing physical attributes of your body. You're going to attract a woman who's potentially as vapid as you are. <laughs> and, and that is, okay, go for it. But then don't be sad six months down the road when she's potentially sending pictures to other dudes, getting their validation as well. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll piggyback off of this is one thing I've noticed, for example, online in the red pill communities, a, a lot of them, the men there say you should never care what a woman thinks about you, right? Uh, some of what you're saying here, right? Don't get your validation from women. But they also say, if you're a high value man, then every woman will want to have sex with you. So they claim, I don't care what women think of me. And on the other hand, it's, I only prove my value if tons of women are having sex with me. Mm -hmm. So I call this vaginal validation. It's vaginal validation. I have had sex with this many vaginas, not even women. I've had sex with this many vaginas. That is my worth. And they are getting validation through the amount of women they have had sex with. Mm -hmm. I say this, a characteristic of a high value man in this regard is, can you maintain an emotionally intimate relationship with a stable, loving woman? Mm -hmm. This is going from red pill to what I call clear pill. The clear pill is, can you be clear, transparent, emotionally intimate, bonded, uh, vulnerable without being weak, right? Those are two very different things that men don't even understand the difference between. Can you do that? If you cannot, you offer very little value that she couldn't get from the government mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not guys if you think you're competing with the government for a woman's approval you are not offering what a woman values yeah and another misconception of a lot of communities is vulnerability men don't be vulnerable because she her vagina will dry up <laughs> And she will never want to have sex with you. Again. If you are vulnerable, she will leave your house immediately and have sex with your best friend on the front lawn. Oh, awesome. Great. Let, let, a little grass burn there. Right. Um, no, that is absolutely not the case. What women do not appreciate is victimhood. Yes. So the difference between leadership and non-leadership is a man who understands the circumstance that he is in, who takes responsibility for the circumstances in his life, who understands how to get himself out of those circumstances and then shows her that he has the competencies to get himself out of that circumstance. Whether that is networking, whether that is if your business failed, okay, how are you going to rebuild? What is your plan? Are you going to network with other men? Are you going to not invest in a certain thing? Um, are you going to get a job, two jobs, to get yourself out of the mess that you've gotten into? You know, if you are having a bad day, that's okay, share it. Mm -hmm. But if it's 10 bad days, if it's 20 bad days, if it's 40 bad days, and she constantly is hearing you're complaining, and, and yes, everyone goes through a bout of depression, but your partner should not be your therapist. Your partner should not be the one to get you out of the hole that you're in, mm -hmm. but a woman values a man that is has a high emotional EQ and who is in touch with his feelings, who is in touch now. It doesn't have to be as emotional as she, but who can also hold space for himself and for her. I remember there was a, there was a period in, in my marriage, it's been 15 years. You can tell we've gone up, up and down and up and down. And there was a period where our, our, our finances were doing terribly and, and I had put in so much work and, and we were making some changes and we, we took a gamble and it eventually did pay off, but there was a really dark period where it almost didn't. And I had 
us having panic attacks like daily, like what if, what if my investments don't pay off? What if this doesn't happen? And I remember at one point I, 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 I open up to my wife and she's like, okay, something's going on. Talk to me. So I start talking to her and then I couldn't stop. And I was like, ah, and then, then I would, I would like kind of mention these feelings to her. And I remember stopping at one point a week or two in and saying, okay, am I losing you here? Am I saying too much? Am I complaining a lot? Um, I'm having this, this worry, this panic. Where am I at? What, what am I doing? Am I going to lose you? Right. The internet says, I will. No, I didn't say that, but <laughs> am I going to, am I going too far and losing your respect? And I remember she said something very important. She said, you will lose my respect if you don't do something about it. Correct. And she said, I love hearing it. I like that you can tell me. Mm -hmm. I will only lose respect for you if you don't do something about it. Mm -hmm. And that was the distinction for her. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter almost even what I said as long as I was doing something. And that does that match that victim? 100%. Piece? And I want to call out another thing since we're giving the men some tools on what it means to be higher value. And I will use your term, but really creating that masculine and feminine polarity. And what that really truly means to a woman is that men, you are going to be the more rational of the species. Mm -hmm. If you expect a woman to be as rational as you, you will be single for a long time, or you will be very frustrated within your relationship. Mm. A woman is like the ocean, ups and downs, tides, full moons, all over the place. That is how our cycles work. The minute that you have that realization, you will find yourself accepting. What do we talk about today? We talk about happiness, right? And our expectation not meeting the reality. So if you think, if your expectation is that she is going to act like a man, <laughs> if she is not going to have certain different emotions than you, and I teach the same thing to women, do not expect a man to be as emotional as you. That is, that is a a poor expectation on your part. If you think that you can go to your man and talk to him like a girlfriend, not going to work. Mm. So I think that we need to level the playing field here and remember that we have to have different circles outside of our primary relationship in order for us to go to, but with a man to be that rock, to be that stability, to, to just stand in the face of her emotions and say, all right, I got you. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And not speak, you know, a lot of men will make the mistake of just being so direct and they shut that woman down before she's even had a chance and that will make her feel unsafe. And she will, that you will actually cause a worse outcome, a more emotional outburst if you, if you poke the bear. Absolutely. And, and I will say this as well. Um, the happiest people on earth, as you and I have learned, have a thriving social network of support of five people in their life or, or people that hold them accountable. We've also heard that you are an accumulation of the top five people in your life, right? Your, your, your value, if you like, it, it rises or falls based on, on these people around you, not even just your value, but your quality of life mm -hmm. to be a high value man. You have to have some relationships. You have to, you can't be some dude who wanders in off the street and then tries to date a girl. And she says, who do you know? I don't know anyone. You will be the only one in my life. Build your networks, especially friends who hold you accountable. If you want to be a high value man, you should be around other men who share those values that are going to lead you to happiness, that are going to lead you into being healthy really healthy. Fulfilling. And a woman will notice that a woman notices a man's circle. A woman notices who, because if you're, if you, if your friend Bob is cheating on his wife and you're going, okay, Bob, what are you going to do about like, you know, hello, she needs to see that you are going to stand up to your friend and say, you're ruining your relationship. What are you doing? This is exactly why I say I will never be friends with a man who cheats on his wife. Now I don't say who cheated, but who is currently cheating on his wife, that man, I will not be his friend. I'm not going to shoot him. And I'm not going to say you're scum, but I will say, if this continues, there is no way I can be your friend because you're not acting in a way that a friend should act, not to me or to her. Because you value fidelity in your relationship and those are the types of people that you want to surround yourself with. If he will hurt somebody that he has sworn an oath to care for, what is he going to do to me? 
Mm-hmm. But that women think that the women see that as well. And men should see it too. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's wrap it up with some takeaways for our men as far as what what they can do immediately. I will say from the outside appearance, right, guys, my mom always said, and I'll never forget it, the saying goes way back, but you never get uh, you know, a second chance to make a first impression. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to show up and I've curled my hair, I've put my makeup on, I've done all the things to want to put my best foot forward, just like you would on a job interview. I know dating people are burnt out by it, but put some effort in, yeah. go to a tailor or get fitted, get a couple good shir- shirts and shorts, just get a couple of things that you can just rotate through that will show you as presentable, Mm -hmm. learn how to talk to women. And the best way to do that is potential. I know this is a whole other episode, but men and women, as far as friends goes, you know, or, or talk to anybody, learn to just talk to people and be able to have conversations. And if you have a few female friends that you have, that you can have a conversation with even better. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I would say, you know, work hard, but understand that if you lead with money, If you lead with extrinsic values that you're going to attract a woman that only values you for your extrinsic value, Mm -hmm. work on your internal, understand what self-esteem is, understand what makes high self-esteem become uh, travel, go be a, become a storyteller, get experiences underneath your belt so that you're not boring to sit across Mm -hmm. when you're on a date be able to share what you did last Friday, whether it was a concert, whether it was going bowling with your friends, whether it was a new hike that you explored. That is what makes you an integrated man, somebody who has had experiences and that you can share that with a woman. Absolutely. And along with that, men, if you want to be a high value man, make sure that you are capable of having an emotionally intimate relationship with a stable woman. Make sure that you have emotionally intimate relationships with your good friends, people you can respect and showcase that ability to have relationships with those people, right? And build that masculine confidence, build that out. Sarah, I know I have the attachment boot camp course that walks men through how to build emotionally intimate relationships, how to be able to do that. I have this course, men, if you don't know how to do it, I will teach you. Sarah, do you have something out there to help men grow in confidence and improve their inner value for themselves? I do. I have a, a full course with seven different modules that basically takes you through from the very beginning, why you're potentially attracted to certain types of women that you shouldn't be attracted to and how to break those patterns. And then, you know, I have, I cover common disagreements that men and women face. I cover charisma. I cover how to really woo a woman from start to finish and how to keep a relationship alive because it's, it's not only getting her, it's what do women want long-term because I've, I've, we've seen in some of the studies, a woman's sex drive is, is good, 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 good. And then it drops off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things and reasons why that potentially happens, but they are entirely preventable. Mm-hmm. So you can find mine at saradonmore.com And Adam, I know that all of our links will be in the description and in the show notes if you're listening. Absolutely. It's been an amazing conversation. And I know that our viewers are going to take a lot of value from this. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us on I Wish You New Podcast. And we can't wait to see you on the next one. My name is Sarah Don Moore, and this is Adam Lane Smith. See you soon.